Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to wherever you are in the world. My name is Mr. Jason, and today I have a read aloud for you. Today's story is The Day the Crayons Quit by Drew DeWalt. This story is about a little boy by the name of Duncan who finds a letter on his desk. It didn't come from his parents or it didn't come from his friends, it didn't even come from his teacher. It came from the crayons in his crayon box. Now, as you probably already, as you've probably gathered thus far, this book is about colors. So, as we go through the story, I want you to write down the words and the different things that they describe along with that color, such as a gray elephant or a blue oceans or let's see, a, oh, a pink cowboy. <laughs> now, if you don't know how to spell these words, no worries. I'll have text bubbles over each and everything that is talked about in this book. So each item will have a text bubble so you can write down those words. Now, as you write down those words, I want you to add the color word right next to it. So if it's an apple, you have red. If it's a banana, you have yellow. And then you can find things around you, whether it be at home, uh, outdoors, or even in your classroom, and you can add them to your list. So if you're sitting on a red chair, you can write that in the red list. If you have on a blue hat, you can write blue hat on that part of your list. Just something to help keep you engaged with the story. So join me as we go on the colorful journey in The Day the Crayons Quit and read alouds with Mr. Jason. The Day the Crayons Quit by Drew DeWalt. One day in class, Duncan went to take out his crayons and found a stack of letters with his name on them. Hey, Duncan, it's me, Red Crayon. We need to talk. You make me work harder than any of the other crayons. All year long, I wear myself out coloring fire engines, apples, strawberries, and everything else that's red. I even work on holidays. I have to color all the Santas at Christmas and all the hearts on Valentine's Day. I need a rest. Your overworked friend, Red Crayon. Dear Duncan, all right, listen. I love that I'm your favorite crayon for grapes, dragons, and wizard hats, but it makes me crazy that so much of my gorgeous color goes outside the lines. If you don't start coloring inside the lines soon, I'm going to completely lose it. Your very neat friend, Purple Crayon. Dear Duncan, I'm tired of being called light brown or dark tan because I am neither. I am beige, and I am proud. I'm also tired of being second place to Mr. Brown Crayon. It's not fair that Brown gets all the bears, ponies, and puppies, while the only things I get are turkey dinners, if I'm lucky, and wheat. And let's be honest, when was the last time you saw a kid excited about coloring wheat? <laughs> Your beige friend. Beige Crayon. Duncan, Gray Crayon here. You're killing me. I know you love elephants, and I know that elephants are gray, but, but that's a lot of space to color in all by myself. And don't even get me started on the rhinos, hippos, and humpback whales. You know how tired I am after handling one of those things? Such big animals. Baby penguins are gray, you know. So are very tiny rocks, pebbles. How about one of those once in a while to give me a break? Your very tired friend, Gray Crayon. Dear Duncan, you color with me, but why? Most of the time, I'm the same color as the page you are using me on, white. If I didn't have a black outline, you wouldn't even know I was there. I'm not even in the rainbow. I'm only used to color snow or 
fill in the empty space between other things, and it leaves me feeling, well, empty. We need to talk. Your empty friend, White Crayon. Hi, Duncan. I hate being used to draw the outline of things, things that are colored in by other colors, all of which think they're brighter than me. It's not fair when you use me to draw a nice beach ball and then fill in the colors of the ball with all the other crayons. How about a black beach ball sometimes? Is that too much to ask? Your friend, Black Crayon. Dear Duncan, as Green Crayon, I am writing for two reasons. One is to say that I like my work, loads of crocodiles, trees, dinosaurs, and frogs. I have no problems and wish to congratulate you on a very successful coloring things green career so far. The second reason I write is for my friends, Yellow Crayon and Orange Crayon, who are no longer speaking to each other. Both crayons feel they should be the color of the sun. Please settle this soon because they're driving the rest of us crazy. Your happy friend, Greed Crayon. Dear Duncan, Yellow Crayon here. I need you to tell Orange Crayon that I am the color of the sun. I will tell him, but we are no longer speaking and I can prove I'm the color of the sun too. Last Tuesday, you used me to color in the sun in your Happy Form coloring book. In case you've forgotten, it's on page seven. You can't miss me. I'm shining down brilliantly on the field of yellow corn. Your pal and the true color of the sun, Yellow Crayon. Dear Duncan, I see Yellow Crayon's already talked to you, the big whiner. Anyway, could you please tell Mr. Tattletail that he is not the color of the sun? I would, but we're no longer speaking. We both know I am clearly the color of the sun because on Thursday, you used me to color the sun on both the Monkey Island and Meet the Zookeeper pages in your day at the zoo coloring book. Aren't you glad I'm here? <laughs> your pal and the real color of the sun, Orange Crayon. Dear Duncan, it has been great being your favorite color this past year, and the year before, and the year before that. I have really enjoyed all the oceans, lakes, rivers, raindrops, rain clouds, and clear skies. But the bad news is that I am so short and stubby, I can't even see over the railing in the crayon box anymore. I need a break. Your very stubby friend, Blue Crayon. Duncan! Okay, listen here, kid. You have not used me once in the past year. It's because you think I'm a girl's color, isn't it? Speaking of which, please tell your little sister I said thank you for using me to color in her pretty princess coloring book. I think she did a fabulous job of staying inside the lines. Now, Back to us. Could you please use me sometime to color the occasional pink dinosaur or monster or cowboy? Goodness knows they could use a splash of color. Your unused friend, Pink Crayon. Hey, Duncan, it's me, Peach Crayon. Why did you peel off my paper wrapping? Now I'm naked and too embarrassed to leave the crayon box. I don't even have any underwear. How would you like to go to school naked? I need some clothes. Help! Your naked friend, Peach Crayon. Well, poor Duncan just wanted to color. And of course, he wanted his crayons to be happy. And that gave him an idea. When Duncan showed his teacher his new picture, she gave him a good work sticker for coloring and a gold sticker for creativity. My, my, my. Seemed like those crayons really had some issues. Well, it looks like Duncan figured it out. And not only did he figure it out for the crayons, 
but he got himself a gold star for creativity. Very colorful page that he had. <laughs> so for an extension, I want you to take all the colors that we saw in our story and I want you to make a picture of your own. It can be anything that you want. It can be some of the items that we saw in the story or it can even be things that you make up on your own. Whatever, I know it's going to be tremendous. Now, what I would like for you to do with that picture is, is I would like you to post it. That's right. I want you to post it either on Read Aloud's Mr. Jason's Facebook page or Instagram page. That way I know who's looking and who's listening. Thank you again for joining me for another wonderful story. I had a blast as I always do. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. <laughs> I can't wait to read again with you soon. And don't forget, keep reading.